we live yeah all right okay hey all welcome to today's session so we wait for just yeah okay thanks a lot for everyone for jo joining and the people who are going to join today we have with us mohit ali the founder and the principal architect of pi carrot and he is also very well, he is made a great contribution by building this library and we are very happy to have you in today's session i hope all the participants would be able to gain a lot of insight both on the library and the easy to ease of use of that particular library so i give uh, thanks a lot for joining sir and uh, also for building this library and you can take over the session all right do we know how many people uh, have so far uh, uh it's around 11 we can wait for some more time i guess yeah the people are joining right now it's 10 right now okay let's let's give another 2 3 minutes yeah Okay, we have some comments. Can you see the comments, Luis? Um, <clears throat> I've uh, shown it on the screen. Yep, live comments. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, should we start? Yeah, we have twenty people right now. We can start. Okay. <clears throat> you can see my screen and you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Good evening or morning, depending on where you are from. Uh, I'm based in Toronto, so it's a it's a early Saturday morning for me. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Moiz Ali, uh, and I'm an analytics leader in PwC Canada by day, but I'm a passionate data scientist uh, by night. Um, I am a very active open source contributor. Uh, I have contributed in many projects. Most recent one being uh, PyCanet. Uh, and uh, PyCaret is an open source machine learning library, and today's session is about PyCaret. So I'm assuming you have, you either know very little about PyCaret or you have never used PyCaret before. So today's session uh, would be a little bit talking about PyCaret plus uh, a lot of demos and tutorials. 
All right, I, I'm a, by profession and uh, my background, I'm a charter accountant. I'm a member of CPA, CMA Canada and ACMA UK. And I have lived and worked in four continents and mostly in analytics uh, and reporting role in public health. These days I'm in lockdown based in Toronto, uh, working for PwC. All right, I'm very active on social media. So if you'd like to connect me, follow me, please feel free to follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And I'm uh, very active uh writer as well so feel free to follow me on medium for for my weekly posts all right some important links before we get into this session so website github linkedin youtube we have a lot of resources on PyCarrot. in today's session in one hour we could only do so much uh but if you would like to continue learning about it feel free to use these channels there are uh, easy to easy to follow tutorials uh, in video formats or in, in, in written format. So this is a very important slide for you. This presentation and all the demos, notebook, and everything that we're going to use today is uploaded on this GitHub link, github.com slash pycat slash tfmeetup. So you can clone the repo if you want to get this presentation and everything else that we're going to do today. Uh, if you want, please, please, please follow uh, hashtag pycat on LinkedIn and Twitter to get more updates about PyCarrot. All right, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly go through these resources in the in the slide that are there for you, so that when you need it, you can come back and 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 go through them. Uh, but I'm not gonna talk about these resources. There are a lot of uh, written articles about deploying or integrating PyCarrot with different technologies or different stacks in AWS, Google, or Azure. And I'm just gonna pass through this just just so that you know there are a lot of tutorials there. Uh, and you can see them at your own time and continue learning more about Python. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, before we get into the session, uh, if you plan to follow along uh, this uh, session today, uh, you can go to this GitHub link that I have shown earlier. There's a mistake here. This is not the right link. I'll replace it. But you can go to the GitHub link, github.com slash pycarrot slash pycarrot dash demo dash uh, TF meetup uh, and there are notebooks there for you to download and alternatively if you don't want to download the notebooks you want to work on Google Colab you should go to this link pycarrot.org slash demo and there are four links of Google Colab notebooks uh, that, that you can follow along all right and if you have not installed pycarrot before it's uh, it's it's a package on PyPI so you can simply install it using pip uh, it would take 10 to 15 minutes and it will install all the dependencies with it. All right, so let's get into today's session. Uh, so this uh, ML development life cycle, this is the diagram I'm assuming most of you are familiar with. This is a very high level diagram that starts with defining business problem, gathering data until deployment, right? What we're gonna do today, it's gonna focus on this part only, which is training, tuning, and deploying, right? Because uh, the part before that, ETL, gathering data, uh, acceptance criteria, this is very generic. So we're gonna focus on this specific part and we'll see how does the granular ML life cycle looks in, in reality, right? So let's let's go ahead. So first, uh, any, any a typical supervised ML uh, would start with business problem, right? And then you would convert that business problem into some kind of ML objective so that you can quantify value, get sponsors to fund your project. All right, and then you collect data, analyze data. So these four, uh, the first four boxes are common to many experiments, but that's, uh, but for, from frame test to split, that's where um, the granularity of uh, machine learning experiments start. So you, you split your data set, uh, you have to handle different data types, categorical and numerical, because uh, there are different treatments for different data types in machine learning. You impute missing values, you handle encodings, you scale your data based on algorithms that you are using, you do multiple kinds of transformations, feature engineering, feature interaction, blah, 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 right? You keep going and you do model training, uh, you do some kind of cross validation to track the performance of model because you're not building one model, you're building multiple models until you finally get to a model which, which satisfies your uh, your requirement. All right, then you start hyper-tuning uh, the parameters of model. 
uh, start tuning the hyperparameters of the model. And then again, you track the performance, you compare with base models, you keep doing this iteratively, right? And you do, you do zillion other things before you actually uh, finalize a model and deploy it for consumption. Uh, and, the, and the worst part is you have to repeat this cycle several times with different pipelines, different features, different techniques, different algorithms until you come to a model, which is your final model that you would serve in production. Okay, so what, what's the challenge? The challenge is machine learning is a very iterative process and it takes a lot of time uh, in, in repeating the experiments and stay, stay, stay organized throughout, right? You generate a lot of metadata. So at the end of the day, machine learning is a glorified software development problem, except for that uh, software development cycle is not as iterative or not as, uh, is, is not as experimental uh, as machine learning, right? So it's a little bit different in that sense. In, in machine learning, often it's about asking right questions. And in order to ask the right questions, you have to stay focused throughout the process. Uh, what I mean by that is instead of dealing with why that code is not working, that code is not working and troubleshooting your own code, uh, you should have a tool which is uh, very handy, as simple as writing SQL and is not, is not, you don't have to depend on Stack Overflow or you don't have to depend on multiple resources to copy your code. It should be as simple as you should, you should be able to write it on fly. And, and that's where PyCaret comes in, right? PyCaret is an open source uh, and low code machine learning library, which means that the code that you would be writing would more like be natural constructs, just like you write in SQL. That makes it easy for you on two levels. One, uh, it's it, there's nothing to remember uh, so that you can start a new file tomorrow and just just write everything from scratch because there's really nothing. And by the end of this session, you would realize there's actually nothing to remember in this, right? The second advantage is it's consistent whether you are doing supervised experiment or unsupervised experiment. Uh, the functions and the way the whole uh, package or uh, API works is very consistent. In PyCAD, you can do, there are six modules. You can do classification, regression, clustering, anomaly detection, NLP, and, uh, and association rule mining. And all of them follows the exact same API. So it is very easy to use and it's, uh, it's, it's business ready. Uh, I, I, just because it's so low code and simple, it doesn't mean it's, it's, a, it's a tool for, for beginners or it's a basic tool. I see PyCaret more as a productivity tool, and I use PyCaret being author. I also use PyCaret in my, at my work, uh, and this this saves a lot of time for me. And um, we have done one experiment, and let me show you. So this graph on your left uh, is on your x-axis. These are stages of uh, of a typical machine learning experiment. Like you start with initializing, importing libraries. You do EDA, pre-processing, multiple model building. So x-axis is sequentially arranged with the stages, starting with initializing and ending with model plotting, which is more like analysis. On y-axis, uh, you have numbers, you have number of lines, uh, you have lines of code written. Uh, these two lines, blue line represent uh, our base library, which is scikit-learn in this case, and red line represents spike edit. And what this graph is showing, as you progress through your experiment, you finish a very simple experiment, uh, writing about 170 lines of code in scikit-learn uh, as opposed to 23 lines only in PyCaret, right? So that's a, that's a huge time saving. A similar graph, except for that on your y-axis, it's not, it's not uh, lines of code, it's basically the percentage taken by PyCaret. And on your x-axis, uh, they're units, so they are uh, tasks arranged in, in the increasing order of difficulty. And, uh, unit five is the most difficult where we, we had uh, asked 10 data scientists to ensemble the models, hyper tune the models and compare the models, blah, 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 right? And you can see in, in, in unit five setting, PyCaret only takes 8% of the time that you would otherwise take in other libraries. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's quite a productivity tool uh, and you can inject it in part of your existing workflow, that's the beauty. So there's no learning curve or new uh, changes or architect changes you have to make. You can inject it in your ETL pipeline, you can inject it 
in, in any BI client tool like Power BI or Tableau or ClickSense for that matter, or even you can just take PyCaret code, which is essentially like two, three words, you can inject it in your SQL server. So it's well integrated with, with the entire ecosystem. Okay, some facts about it, it started uh, one year ago, almost in the summer of 2019, completely written in Python. Uh, future versions may have thin wrappers uh, for other languages, but uh, there's nothing at the moment. It took one year to complete, self-funded so far, and uh, supported by a team of brilliant people uh, here in Canada and worldwide. So, and if you would like to contribute, we are, we are obviously open source dependent on community contribution. Please uh, feel free to reach out uh, using this link, pycaret.org slash contribute. Um, if you can code, that's good. If you cannot, we still need a lot of help with documentation, content development, uh, website upgrades. So uh, feel free to feel, feel free to contribute. Okay, uh, who should use pycaret? That's uh, my my. That's when we when we build this package. That was our ideal audience uh, in our mind. But after the first release. Uh, the kind of feedback uh, that we have got, we have seen interest from not only from students, but also from really experienced data scientists who want to use PyCaret on command line or, uh, or in, in, in any uh, non-notebook environment. So initially, PyCaret 1.0 uh, was uh, optimized for notebook, which means Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, Google Colab, or anything, any, any notebook environment that supports HTML, right? Uh, because PyCaret uses uh, HTML. But after all the feedback that we have got after that, uh, the next release of PyCaret, which is 2.0, it's expected in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be uh, optimized for non-notebook environment as well, which means that you can run it on command line, uh, which kind of makes it uh, more appealing for, for a broader audience. And today, for the first time, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show one demo through PyCare 1.0, uh, assuming that you have not used before uh, or you know very little about PyCare. And immediately after that, I'm going to show PyCare 2.0, uh, which I have uploaded last night as a nightly package so that you can pip install that if you would like. Uh, obviously, it's not uh, production ready. It's, it's an unstable release. So make sure you don't use it in your pipelines yet. Uh, but you can use it or whatever you would see today. You can you can try, you can experiment with it. And if, if you want to be early adopter and give your feedback, uh, feel free to do that. All right. I've already talked about that. So let's get into the demo. Uh, again, this link is uh, not right. It should be pycaret-demo-tf meetup. Uh, so if you want to follow along, uh, clone that repository, there are four uh, I pynb files so for notebooks that you can follow along. Um, if you are using Mac, uh, you might have problem installing LightGBM, which is Microsoft's open source framework implementation of uh, gradient boosting machines. Uh, you'll have to build it from source. And if you don't know how to do it, pycaret.org slash install. That's, that's where we have uh, talked about if you're a Mac user and having difficulties. Um, feel free to follow that instructions. If you still have problem, the best way to report or get an answer uh, is, uh, is logging an issue on GitHub so that uh, other people from community can also help. I'm mostly overwhelmed on my LinkedIn with the messages regarding uh, PyCaret. So you, you might not get a very quick response on LinkedIn. If you're facing issue, make sure if you're facing issue, the best way or the right way to do it is you log in GitHub issue so that it helps others. All right, I'm going to give one minute here for people who want to follow along, uh, can see these links. And right after that, we get into them. All right, so let's get started with our first demo, which is let me, which is classification, okay? And I am using my local Jupyter Notebook. The file name is PyCaret classification demo. So if you are using it for the first time on your computer, you'll have to follow this pip install PyCaret. You have to install it. It takes 10, 15 minutes. You can do it in Jupyter Notebook, or you can also do it using a command prompt, uh, wherever you 
uh, you're comfortable with. I have already installed. I'm not going to run the cell. I'm going to check the version just for confirmation 1.0.0. And that's right. OK. PyCaret has a <clears throat> one module called data sets, uh, which basically is nothing but is, 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 a, is a repository of uh, toy data sets. So instead of when you install PyCaret, so instead of downloading all the data sets into your computer, what we have done is we have created a Git repository. And when you call get data function in PyCaret, it actually goes on to GitHub and download the raw CSV file, store it in this variable. Uh, and if you want to save it, you can save it using parameter. But essentially, it you, you don't download all the files when you download, when you install PyCaret. So that's the idea. Obviously, in order to get the data, you, you need internet connection because it's using the data from GitHub. In this case, I have imported a data called juice and it's stored it in data variable. And each raw in this data set, <clears throat> this is a transactional data set. Each raw in this data set is a transaction. It's a binary classification problem, which means based on all the attributes, what was the price, what was the discount, what was the store, and all these uh, variables, we have to predict whether the customer purchased CH or MM. CH and MM are two different type of juices. So based on all these uh, uh, features, we have to predict whether it's a, whether a transaction is a purchase of CH or MM juice, right? And you can immediately see that there are a couple of things normally you would do before you actually, uh, uh, before you actually, you can start to train the models, right? So you have to do a couple of things. Uh, uh, number one being, you, know, you, you can see the target variable purchase is not one or zero. It's not, it's not encoded, right? So you'd have to do target encoding. That's the first thing. Then you have an ID column in this data set that you'll have to drop or delete before you can, <coughs> excuse me, before you can train your model. And then you have these uh, no and yes, which has to be converted in uh, one hot encoding or any other type of encoding for simplicity, let's do one hot encoding today. And, and then there would be variables that would have perfect collinearity in them, right? For example, this one, uh, not this one, but there are variables I know that are 100% correlated with each other. So if you're using linear algorithms, you might have to uh, remove, uh, remove uh, randomly the variables causing multicollinearity, right? Now, these are only four or five things in this data set, but normally, there, there are missing values that you, you might want to impute. There are high cardinality variables that you have to deal with before you actually fit your model. So you do a lot of things in terms of pre-processing before you actually start training your model, which is which is very simple process. And uh, you end up training multiple models uh, leading to a model selection process and then come up with a final model based on some kind of metrics or cross-validation process, right? <coughs> The problem is whatever you do on this data set, you also need those transformers to be orchestrated or arranged sequentially so that when new data comes in tomorrow, you are able to replicate those stuff, right? Uh, so you you at the end of the and at the end of this experiment, you don't need a model, a scikit-learn object or a get boost object. What you need is the entire pipeline that starts with um, imputers and transformers. Uh, missing value imputer, for example, you need it anyways, right? If you have a data flow coming in, which doesn't control for uh, blank values or missing values, that means uh, in your data generating process, you do not control. So some of the fields are optional. So user may or may not uh, put a value there. In those cases, you always need an imputer in your transformation pipeline. Otherwise, your model won't work, right? So things like those. Uh, in PyCaret, um, all those things are completely automated. And the way we handle it is you have to initialize uh, the setup in PyCaret. And all the pre-processing transformations, uh, train test split, and there are many other global settings you can handle through one small powerful function, which is, which is setup. And before we run that, you, you might have seen this line from PyCaret.classification import style. And if you are coming from a programming background, by now you're already burning me in your mind. And before you burn me out, let me explain. Um, I know uh, it's uh, you have been told, or it's it's, it's it's not a very good practice to use asterisks when you are importing libraries. But the idea behind PyCaret is a little bit different. What we want you to do is have all the functions that are 
10, 12, 13 functions which are correlated with each other or which are talking to each other. What we want you to do is have access to all of them uh, when you are performing experiment in notebook, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the reason we say we should not do that is so that we can trace back if something fails in production. So what I'm saying is when you are doing your experiment in person experiment in notebook, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, when you move that this code in production, and we'll, I'll show you the script today, how would you write this in production? When you are moving it, it into production, then you can point out to the exact functions, right? So uh, I, I, I don't know if you would agree with me, but there's nothing wrong if you are doing an active experimentation, there's nothing wrong importing all the functions, just like you would do in fast AI if you have, if you have used fast AI. Okay, so let's initialize, uh, and to initialize setup, I'm gonna pass my data, which is stored in variable data, and then just tell the target, which is purchase. Session ID is like a seed. It would take this number 786 and it would distribute this number into all the functions that you would use. And in normal experiment, you have about more than 100 functions which use uh, random distribution, right? So the reason you do that is so that it's reproducible. Okay, let me go ahead and run this. What it would do, the first thing it would do is it would uh, go back into the data set and infer the data types based on some rules and print the data types for you. So if you don't agree with any of the data type, you can enter quit and exit. And then there is a way to programmatically override or define the data types. But in this example, uh, let's assume uh, everything is uh, every, every, all the inferred data types are correct. Let's assume that, right? You can also see it has detected ID column with, well, what it means is that you don't need to remove it. Uh, PyCaret will not even remove it from the data set because you might need it back. What we would do is we would hide this column and train the models, right? Same goes for if there is a date in, in your data set, you don't need to do anything. PyCaret would detect the date with a very high probability. And then it would drop the date, but extract the features out from the date for model, right? So that's all automatic. I'm, at this point, I'm going to say everything is OK. I'm going to press Enter. And it would print this grid for me, which is basically an information grid. Uh, it's like a configuration file for your experiment, which says uh, a lot of things. For example, label encoding. CH becomes 0, MM becomes 1. This was your shape of original data. There was no missing value, 13 numeric features, 5 categorical features, blah, blah, blah. Right? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can do a bunch of pre-processing transformations. So for example, you can. <coughs> you can you can scale your data. You can do nonlinear transformations. You can do PCA here. You can combine rare levels. You can do numeric binning using a storage rule. You can remove outliers. You can create clusters, multicollinearity. So this is feature engineering, feature selection. You, are, you, you I encourage you to to, to explore that uh, on your on your own time. And the way you explore that is if you type setup two times question mark, you'd open a documentation. Which basically explains each of the each of the parameter and how you can use it, right? Uh, so really powerful. Okay. So once uh, we have uh, initialized the setup, uh, well, the 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 recommended first uh, uh, step in PyCaret is you start by comparing all the models. Okay. And to do that, the function is compare underscore models. As soon as you run that, what it is doing is it is based on on the transform data set it is fitting all the all the models available in model library uh, using 10 fold cross validation and the metrics you see here accuracy auc recall precision f1 kappa is based on 10 fold cross validation on what data set so when you initialize the setup we originally had 1070 uh, samples <coughs> the first screen test is split when you initialize setup would split it by default into 70 and 30, right? And you can change that percentage in setup. But for now, our train set is 748. And 322 samples are kept totally outside of PyCaret so that there's no leakage or anything like that, right? And anything that you perform today in PyCaret would basically be a K-fold cross-validation results on the training set. So all these models here, they are basically tenfold, uh, uh, tenfold model fitting, and the metrics are based on tenfold cross validation on 
748 samples, right? And you can change the fold and other parameters by using fold parameter in comparables, right? So if you would do fold is equal to five, it would uh, train models using five fold cross validation and these metrics would basically be average of five fold cross validation. In this case, it's average of 10, right? Okay. So in PyCAD at 1.0, you, you, can, you can run compare models, but you don't get anything back, right? It's just a reference grid for you. There's, there's no object, there is no variable here. What we would do is we would eyeball, okay, logistic aggression, LDA and bridge. These are my top three models. What I can do is using create model, I can create a model. And what, what it means is it trains the model, right? And if I do this, create model LR, LR means uh, logistic aggression in classification. And here's the here's the entire entire grid of models and their IDs. So if you were to train a logistic regression LR, if you were to train decision tree BT, and you would notice that the mean result of this create model function is same as what, what you have seen here. So 8995 is this number, 8995, right? So the idea is you, you run compare models, eyeball your top models, and you continue uh, do whatever you want. You can, you can tune your top performing candidates or models, or you can ensemble them, you can blend them, you can stack them, whatever you want, right? So that's, that's the idea. <laughs> so you realize that even though uh, there is a there is a degree of atom or automation involved in it, you still need a person sitting in front to do in-person modeling because uh, it's not it's not automatically connecting the dots. Okay, just like you can create the model using create model, you can tune the model using tune model. Right, very simple. Uh, what it would do is it would do a random grid search uh, over a predefined. Uh, Tuning a space in PyCaret 2.0 based on a lot of feedback that we have received. Uh, we have provided the ability to define your own tuning grid as well. Uh, okay, so let me tune knife base. And the only thing different here is I'm asking is explicitly that train a model and what I want to optimize is AUC. By default, it would optimize accuracy. Uh, but if your data set is not balanced and there are so many other reasons you might not want to use it, accuracy, you can tune your models for any of these other parameters, AUC, recall, precision, F1 count. And iter means simply number of iterations because it's a random grid search. And you might have noticed that if, if you're by default, it's a, it's a 10 iteration search. Uh, sometimes this is not enough to get uh, or, or improve your results from the base performer. So you have to increase that parameter. Okay. So you can create the model using create, tune the model using tune. You can also ensemble the model using ensemble model. What it would do is it would wrap it, wrap your inner model into a bagging classifier or boosting classifier, uh, like add a boost based on based on the method that you define. Right, and then I'm creating these three models: LR, LDA, GBC, which would mean logistic regression linear discriminant analysis and gradient boosting classifier and then i'm passing this into uh, in as a, as, a, as a list into blend models what it would do is it would do a voting classifier of these three models all right so if i go ahead and just check this this is nothing but a voting classifier of lda gbc and logistic regression right uh, there are a lot of plotting options in PyCaret, so let me let me just show you. Uh, again, plot underscore model is the function, and there is a list of plots that you can do. Here's the list. Uh, again, uh, you can check the documentation. Let me just quickly quickly run it for you, and you and you would realize that. Uh, this is more like you would create multiple, uh, you would train multiple models and you would quickly see their plots, uh, do your analysis. So very quick or rapid prototyping, I would say, right? And if without PyCaret, I mean, you, 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 it, it would take you a lot of time, uh, a loss of focus and uh, multiple line of code and then not just code, you'd have to like keep troubleshooting that for, or mean manage that code, right? Anyways. And also, um, if you are coming from a computer science background, it, it may not, uh, you, might, you might find things intuitive which are not, especially for people who are not coming from computer science background. 
and the way that the way that it's going on at the moment is you have a good amount of percent good percentage of people uh, in data science that are coming from business functions or, or non non quantitative or non technical fields all right so you also have this uh, nice little uh, widget here uh, if you don't want to just even type this came out what you can do is just pass your model and evaluate and you would get this widget and you can just play around it and get multiple plots. Uh, there's also a Shapley uh, value implementation, uh, which, which is basically the model explay explanation. Uh, and there's a very nice package in Python called Shap. So we have implemented Shap in PyCaret as well. So you can directly uh, do a reason code of your train model or even check the model agnostic using plot like this. <coughs> okay. All right. So what I would do now, normally I would, uh, uh, I would show you the same thing in, in regression, but what I would do now uh, is I would show you a regression experiment, an example uh, using PyCarrot 2.0. And I would point out the differences to you. Uh, all right. Okay. So first thing, obviously, uh, if you notice, I'm using a different environment here, pycaret nightly env If you don't know how to do that, uh, you should go to pycaret.org slash install, and there are instructions on how to create a Conda environment and link it to Jupyter Notebook. I'm using a separate environment, obviously, because I don't want pycaret 1.0 to conflict with it. So if you are using Python 1.0 already, uh, make sure you create an environment before you install Nightly. And once you have an environment, you can install pycaret dash Nightly. Uh, as the name tells you, it's it's a Nightly refresh package. Whatever we are we are doing, it's 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 uploaded every night. Uh, so if, even if you are using it, make sure you update it every day. Uh, one more time, it's not a stable version yet. So be mindful of that. Okay. <coughs> So I'm using PyCaret nightly. I'm loading the data set. So same thing, but this time it's a, it's a, it's a regression. It's a regression data set, Boston, where each row, uh, each row is an instance uh, of, 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 of a house, I think. Uh, and then MED value, which is a median value. Uh, that's your target variable, right? And it's a continuous value. That's why it's regression. Okay. So one thing that I'm doing differently, uh, if you compare this uh, from, from classification experiment in 1.0 is one thing, obviously I'm importing regression instead of classification. Uh, but these are some extra, extra variables. Logging is equal to true. Experiment name is equal to Boston TF meter, right? Let me just do it, TF meter two. Uh, and I'll show you, instead of telling you what it would do, I'll show you what it would do. Right, let me just run it. Same thing, it would ask you to confirm the data types, assuming everything else is correct. I'm just gonna go ahead. All right. Now, <clears throat> if you notice that this command here, it's the same function we have used uh, in, in our last tutorial. Uh, one thing different here is I am storing it into a variable and I'm passing a function, uh, a parameter called n select, which essentially means that compare all the models, but also return me the top five models. So if you want top three models, you will change this with three, top seven models, you will change it with seven, right? By default, it will return you one model but if you want a list of models, and I'll tell you why I need a list, just pass n select is equal to five, right? And let me go ahead and run mm -hmm. this. Uh, one thing uh, while this is running, one thing that's really uh, powerful in PyCare 2.0 is uh, 2.0 is built with an idea of converting your notebook or 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 your any ID environment into a blank canvas for you, which means that uh, as you are performing your experiment, 
in, in PyCarrot 2.0, we are generating a blueprint. So that means whatever you are doing, we have a blueprint of that and we are logging that blueprint. And it would help you in many ways, which we'll not discuss today. But one, one of the immensely powerful thing about 2.0 is it's modular automation. That means that you can connect the dots and you can, you, by far, you have seen in 1.0 in-person modeling, which means that you have to be there in person to, to select the models uh, or, or be part of model selection process. But things like this, where functions are returning models and they are connecting with other functions, uh, in Python 2.0, you can do a completely automated run, which means you could create a generic recipe or a code uh, that would uh, perform exact those steps. And your final objective would be to select the batch model, right? So that makes it really powerful because now your goal is to create generalized recipes which fits well on wide variety of data set, and then you can reuse it. And if it's still not clear, uh, I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, while get boost is completing, uh, one other thing uh, in PyCarrot two point oh is um, you, you know how you pass those IDs in create model, create model string LR, which means create train a logistic or linear regression. With 2.0, uh, you'd be able to pass your own customized models. As long as they follow the fit predict API, uh, you can pass them in PyCaret and take the benefit of all the other functionalities. So it doesn't have to be a light GBM, XGBoost, GetBoost, or a scikit-learn object. It can be anything. And if you see on GitHub, um, there are so many implementation of classifiers or even uh, regressors uh, that follows uh, fit predict API, I think that became like a gold standard for industry. So you can actually use those objects in PyCaret. Uh, so for example, you, if you're using, if you're doing transfer learning, you're using GPLearn, you can literally pass the GPLearn estimator in PyCaret and it would just work like anything else. Okay, and this time I have this grid here. Uh, all the models and six metrics, uh, MAE, MSE, RMSE, R square, RMSLE. Maybe in 2.0, we also have training time, which is which was one of the requested feature. And you can see my top five models are gradient boosting, cat boost, random forest, extreme gradient boosting, which is XG boost and extra trees. And if I see my top five, uh, these are my top five models here, right? These are my top five models, okay. Now imagine you are not doing an in-person modeling. What you are doing here is you are comparing all the models, selecting or shortlisting the top five models, right? And then you can pass it into a blender, right? Which is automatic. So next time, if instead of these five models, there are some other five models that are top five, you are still kind of reproducing that experiment without, uh, without hard coding the models, right? You can do this with blending. You can do this with the stacking. Let's <coughs> give it a minute. So my best R square so far mm -hmm. is 0.86 based on 10.4. And blend model, blender is basically a voting regressor, which kind of uh, combines the prediction of my five models that I've passed into blend models. Right, 86, so no, almost same, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, I'm gonna skip this stack part, which is, which is almost same. Uh, one big thing in PyCaret uh, 2.0 is uh, remember this parameter here, logging is equal to true, experiment name, meetup2, right? What this is doing is this is behind the scene, this is logging everything uh, under MLflow. MLflow is an open source framework adopted by, uh, created and adopted by Databricks. And it's a very, a very good uh, logging framework. And it has one nice, nice little UI as well. So whatever we have done in this experiment, 
or whatever. What we can do at the end of our notebook is type this ML flow UI, right? And as soon as we do that, it would start a server on my local host, right? And which you can see using localhost 5000. And this is the server, right? And this is nice little UI, and this is our folder, Boston TF Meetup 2. And if you can still see, look at this. So each raw here, each raw here is, is, is a model that we have trained. And then you have all the, all the metrics that you have seen in that, uh, in here, uh, so all these metrics here, uh, and then you have a bunch of other things, right? And let's just see one one of the model. Let's see light GBM. You have all the parameters of light GBM: class weight, column sample, max depth, learning rate, estimators, and then you have metrics, and then you have few other things that when you when you would see the documentation, you would understand why why these things are there. But they're really useful. They're really meaningful. So, for example, you have things like um, uh, size of the model in KBs, right? And the training time, because these things are are part of a, are part of your your decision to finalize the model. And when you go into it, uh, along with uh, the metrics and other things, you also have a train model file here, which is saved in this location, right? And you can, this is nothing but a pickle file for the entire transformation pipeline, not just the model but the entire pipeline and the model at the end, right? So uh, you can uh, you can point out to this location to, to get, get that file. So for example, if I go here, let me just stop this for a second. And if I do this, load model, transformation pipeline and model loaded successfully. And if I show you this, this is an entire pipeline. And the last part of this pipeline is like GBM model, right? Uh, so hope that's clear. Uh, at the moment, <clears throat> this is your local file system. But in practice, the way you would use ML, way you would use is uh, you would set up the backend of MLflow uh, uh, somewhere uh, using using MySQL or, or or AWS S3 or anything else, right? You would set up the backend, and your whole team is using a common backend, and the, everybody is performing the modeling and is storing it in, in 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 an experiment, which which is which is one common umbrella, right? And this is more like for you. This is this is a functional leaderboard. At the end of the day, uh, you would come here. You can sort the values and you can basically go ahead and just do this, finalize this model for deployment. So it's not just a uh, logging, but you can use this as a model management tool as well, right? Uh, one other thing that you can do is if you want, you can log the plots, common plots into this. So to, to do that, if you do log plots is equal to true, let me just rerun this. And let me just create a few models here. Uh, let me create VP. Right, and now if I go back here and refresh it, you have a decision tree with all the parameters, all the metrics, but this time you also have train model, but you also have that, that, uh, that, that result grid printed, you have a residual plot, prediction error plot, and a feature importance plot, right? It would obviously take a few extra minutes to generate those plots before it logs it, but uh, but you can do that. So that means that you can run a Python script overnight, um, and you can just have the results presented in your, in your ML flow server, right? So for example, I have this script written, uh, where I am setting up the environment, comparing models and deploying model on Amazon S3. And what I can do is I can simply use a Windows scheduler to, to schedule this Python script. Uh, 
instead of compare models, what I would do is in interest of time, I would create a model and then let me deploy this model Right, so let me now go to my command prompt, activate my light tree environment and go through. This is where my app.py is. What I can do is I can do this. Run my Python file through command line. It would set up. Oops, so, okay, here. So when I'm doing this code for production, instead of static, I am importing functions individually, right? So I hope now this makes sense to you. Uh, let me import create model and rerun the file. So imagine this is a one simple script, uh, which is retraining the model at a periodic time interval. And then you, you are basically, the last line of this says deploy it on S3 and you'd see model successfully deployed on S3. And if I go into my S3 account uh, and go into my bucket, there you go, tfdemo.pkl, it's a pipeline. Uh, we have just uploaded 1021, which is now, right? So you see by allowing it to, to run using command line, uh, it's it's immensely powerful and then you can obviously do something like this ml flow ui it would start a server and we should be able to see a new experiment run named juice script one which is this so we have initialized the setup and then we have created a logistic regression model which is this right all right, um, the last thing about it before we move into Q&A is you can compare the models. So remember I mentioned that uh, PyCare 2.0 would convert your notebook or, or your ID into a blank canvas and then you can write code like this, for example. Uh, for I in NP range 0 0.1 to 1 uh, with the incremental of 0 0.01, Create light GBM model, learning rate is equal to I. So basically I am uh, using a normal Python code. I am writing my search space. Uh, for simplicity, I'm doing a rent, uh, NP arrange, but obviously in practice you would define or design your own, own gradient or uh, own function that would pass those ranges, right? But well, the point here is you can do something like this, run it under a loop, and then I'm not gonna do it now because it would obviously take a few minutes, but I've already done it. So what it would do is it would create, so here I'm creating light GBM models with the increment of 0 0.01 in learning rate. That means I'm creating 100 light GBM models uh, with a different uh, learning rate parameters. And if you see here, this is, this is that experiment, all the light GBMs. What you can do here, very powerful, select those light GBMs compare and then you can on your x-axis you can plot let's plot uh, learning rate on my y-axis let's plot r square right you can see as the learning rate increases r square decreases uh, or, or you could compare compare it with any other metric for example right so very powerful mlflow itself uh, has some great functionalities you can the, the biggest one is i think uh, you can you can export whatever you see here. You can export it into a CSV file, right? So that's kind of uh, to give you a idea about where 2.0 is going. The biggest thing is the the, the entire logging backend of MLflow, but also your ability to to execute PyCaret uh, on command line, right? So I think that's the big thing. As for this demo, there are three other notebooks on Git if you're interested. Uh, you can see clustering uh, and NLP, and you would you'd notice that it follows the exact same format. So there is no point of me talking about that. You can obviously see that. All right, now I realize we are left with only six minutes, so we can 
move ahead uh, and take questions. <laughs> it was an amazing session, Moish. Uh, it was, I guess, PyCarrot is the only library that we need to almost do everything, whatever we want. And the integration of MLflow is truly amazing. I guess uh, the participants would have learned a lot. And thanks a lot for sharing. So can you take the questions? Sure. So let me go into live comments and read the questions. OK, good evening. Good evening. Uh, we are very much excited. How PyCarrot is different from other libraries? <clears throat> so, uh, if, if you if, by other libraries, if you mean like Scikit-Learn in Python, uh, uh, it's uh, or LightGBM or XGBoost, uh, what PyCarrot is trying to do is trying to uh, combine all of them under one hood, similar to Max Kuhn's Carrot in R. So that's that's our inspiration. The other, uh, the other big difference in PyCAD is it's 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 a very low code library. So if you would work at it, you would realize that the way you type your code in PyCAD is more of an R style uh, than your OOP programming in Python. So excited! Thank you, Yasser. Uh, thank you, Adola, for joining. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Uh, I'm happy. Could you please share the link to us? Uh, sure. Um, so. Let me, I don't know if I can type it here, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll post it on my uh, LinkedIn, uh, the GitHub repo. Do we get participation certificate? I'll leave that for, please share the materials. Does PyCarrot support? <coughs> Time series, yeah. So we actually have a time series module coming up uh, in in a two point X release somewhere, not in the immediate one, uh, but it's already on the way. Somebody from community uh, had generously written a uh, uh, PyCarrot API consistent time series module. So uh, I hope uh, you guys will like that. Is this a recorded session? Yeah, recorded will be provided. Thanks to provider material. Does Vivek, does PyCarrot support AutoML or how is it different from AutoML? Yeah, so good good question, Vivek. So in AutoML, generally, every kind of AutoML is doing one thing. It's running a bunch of models and selecting the best model. Now, it could be brute forcing. It could be running multiple models uh, without any search space and just return you the best model, just like you putting yourself, putting all the models in a loop, right? That's the same thing. Uh, some some auto ML like Google, um, they, they, they are using reinforcement learning to define their search space. So that's the idea of auto ML. PyCarrot would allow you to design your own auto ML by writing recipes. So the code we have seen compare models and then blending the top five models, that's your one recipe, right? And then selecting certain pre-processing options, for example, feature interaction with a degree of polynomial degree of four, you could code that uh, in, in setup and that would become your one recipe. And then you can have multiple recipes, you can combine them together uh, and you would obviously sort your uh, ML flow UI and you would see the best model on the top, right? You can do that programmatically as well, but I think that's the idea. The primary difference is when you're using AutoML, you are basically not exposed to their blueprints or recipes. You, you might get blueprints after the fact, right? But you don't have ability to control the the recipes of auto ML. Here in PyCarrot, you would do that. Uh, Surya, any special function for image-based data science? No, no, Surya, sorry. Uh, Arun, sounds very similar to Carrot package in R. Arun, yeah, that's that's the idea. Uh, uh, the, the the original inspiration was from Max Kuhn's uh, work in R, uh, which, is, which is phenomenal. Uh, and I myself, coming from R background, uh, so, you might be able to guess now why uh, this is more like our, our, our kind of typing than, than Python. Raja, any insights on special data models? Uh, no, nope, Raja. No, sorry, Raja. But uh, happy if you would like to uh, work on this uh, and would want to inc include that in, in future versions. Thank you, Vinod. All right. Uh, can we can we type uh, can we type a GitHub repo link here?
Second, I'll just I'll just add the GitHub link. Okay. Python and demo okay. I already shared it. I'll just do it again. Okay. Perfect. So I think. Uh, yeah, I we have few more. Just a few more questions if you have the time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, PyCarrot, uh, okay. The few questions is PyCarrot uses many underlying library uh, behind the scene. So, is there any overhead or is it seamless? It's not a big consideration. Sorry, you, what's again? Uh, I'm available. Okay, PyCarrot uses many underlying libraries. Is there a big overhead while using PyCarrot or is it very, uh, very small thing that we need not worry about? So, uh, <clears throat> so that's a very good point from coming from a production point of view. Uh, what we are planning for future, you, you're right. When you install PyCarrot, you install a lot of dependencies with PyCarrot, like scikit-learn, boost, and there are, and you would also install packages like PyOD, so for outlier detection, right? The point is, if you don't want to use them, why should you? Why should you install them, right? Because uh, it kind of increase the overhead. Uh, for future, where we are going with this is kind of create a modular installation. So when you're working on your computer, the chances are like you're not you're not spinning a machine every every hour, right? So you don't have to reinstall the package. So it's a one-time installation, takes 10, 15 minutes, you do your work. The problem comes in production, especially when you are deploying it using, using cluster or Kubernetes where you have to manage it on the fly. So for future, we are thinking about uh, modular installation. That means if you are deploying it, uh, you can get a very slim version of PyCarrot. Okay, that's great. So that's that's the idea. Okay, we have one more question here. Yeah, sir. So could it be used with NLP problems? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, so there is a, a talk, couple of topic models built into PyCarrot, mostly from GenSim library and few from SQLearn, like non-negative metrics factorization. So you can use it for NLP, uh, but it's a very uh, limited, limited use for NLP uh, and in, in so if, if you're looking for, if, you, if you're solving a highly scalable problem or you, 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 you should, you're better off using BERT and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Okay. So in, uh, in hyperparameter tuning, we go do a lot of auto ML, but when it comes to feature engineering, a bit of human insights are needed in general, right? So is there any way to add our insights to the feature engineering in an effective way? You mean you you want to create your own features? Oh yeah, kind of. Uh, we have some uh, business analytical information that we have when you're doing a feature engineering. How do do we? Uh, how easy it is to add those things in the automated feature engineering, or how does uh, so? You, you I, get the the good part is, I mean, you can use PyCarrot consistently with NumPy or Pandas or anything else, right? Mm -hmm. if, if it's a matter of coming up with business features, you obviously you cannot automate that. You have to build yeah. those features. So the idea would be before uh, initializing the setup in PyCarrot, you add those features in your data set. That's, that's okay. the idea. Okay, sure. I guess uh, a lot of the, all the participants would have learned a lot. And I guess PyCarrot is one library that we can use from, from importing to production. And also the dashboard with MLflow is really amazing. I guess it reduces a lot of my work in my work normally. So looking forward for the 2.0 version. And uh, the 2.0 version also able to store the model. So I guess uh, it would be more helpful also. So thanks a lot for all the, the time you spent in the session. Also for the library that you have built. Looking forward for the library. Thanks a lot, Moise. Thank and thanks Thank everyone for watching. Goodbye. Bye.